All right, animal fans, welcome back. This is another episode of the Animal Podcast. I'm your host. My name is Joseph Percher. Alongside me, as always, Gary G6 Turner. And we got the big man today, Vincenzo Mass Masson. What's going on, big man? How are you? What's up, everybody? I'm doing well, man. How are you guys during this time? <laughs> We're good. We're good. Um, Just making our way through. Yeah. <laughs> making so, do what uh, we can. So, you know, you're, per, you know, a perennial top five, you know, national contender um, on the, you know, on the national level. Um, I'm real curious because you haven't posted anything. Um, you know, I think a lot of people are wondering what the plan is for this year because, you know, you're always in the top five at all the big national shows. Um, obviously, the schedule has been, you know, canceled and changed and moved all around. So what are your plans uh, this year on, on the stage? Yeah, so basically uh, my, my sights are set on the North Americans, okay. uh, which is uh, – Ten and a half weeks out. September, right? Yeah, September. It's ten and a half weeks out. Right. So, well, basically, uh, what I don't know if anyone knows this, but I I uh, I link back up with Dom, my original coach, um, okay. who has been there since day one. He's 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 like a brother to me. Well, uh, we went over a lot of things, man. A lot of things that we did wrong, and a lot of things we're not going to uh, basically do it do again. Yeah. Uh, mistakes that we've made in the past. So it took me a while to kind of like you know, get back with him just because, you know, we, we have done a bunch of shows, which I place pretty well at, but I just don't want to make the same mistakes. And, yeah. and uh, I had to go over that with him. So, you know, we go with talking and we're going to set sights on North America's. Um, and before that uh, is the USA, right? In, in July. Yeah. July, August. So we were like, all right, you know what? I'm in decent shape right now. Let's, uh, I was like 298. Uh, pretty lean, sending them over pictures, and I'm like, you know what? Let's 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 start dieting. Let's go do USA, and then whatever happens happens, and then if we need to, we'll do North Americas and so on, right? Yeah. So we start dieting, dieting for about uh five weeks, five and a half weeks. I get down to 287. Uh, you know, pretty good. I was dieting for about a month, so 10 pounds, 12 pounds is okay, and then fucking he sends me the flyer a new flyer yeah it's, it's december 11th yeah i still remember i was fu my fucking heart just dropped I'm like, oh my god at least you weren't 12 weeks in though where like you'd already started suffering right. you know listen my heart dropped for a second and i i, I took into consideration everyone else who yeah. literally dieted for a full show for the arnold <laughs> australia and things like that and they fucking right. you get on the plane and they tell you no yeah so i'm like fucking suck it up you know you know take the take the hit i went to sleep and i'm like i'll wake up in the morning fine and then we'll talk and see what happens so we're like all right you know what that didn't happen so now we have <laughs> like 30 something weeks <laughs> yeah. from the time it was canceled which was probably like a month ago so um you know we, we're setting our sights on that so um i'm actually setting the sights on nationals to be honest so we're gonna do nationals <laughs> And then, uh, which I did nationals one time before in 2017. Yeah. I placed fifth. And um, so that's unchanged, right? That's still, you know, I guess that's second, that's second Saturday yeah, of yeah, November. Yeah, I'm saying North schedule wise, it hasn't changed. Yeah. No North America has kind of just wanted to take the time to, yeah. um, you know, excel a little in my business career uh, yeah. aside from the bodybuilding uh, and do a couple things over out by me. Um, that are going to really um, help me in the future. So uh, I'm really focusing basically like what we briefly chatted about falling in love with the training again, getting very strong, very strong. Um, and just feeling good, just having fun with it, you know, dieting to a point, uh, kind of eating like whatever I want. Yeah. Um, well, that five weeks but, probably served as a nice little mini cut, like recomp for you and put you back yeah, in a good spot. Yeah, to be blew right back up. I blew yeah. right back up uh to like 300 which is like normal you know that's not even pushing limit that's 300 pounds i feel that i'm very normal at and then once i start trying to push over that i'm like the weight's not where i want to be i feel uncomfortable i feel sluggish yeah it's just not worth it yeah i, I, I see all these you know that's my whole life 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, those days are over for me, bro. <laughs> I, I've already had people ask me if I want to go to 320 next offseason at 5'9". I'm like, no. No, the only way you're going to do that if it's if it's the right look. Not You, you can't just aimlessly – yeah, honestly, I'll probably go to 285 next off season and stay like a lot leaner than Later. I did. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's not. I don't. I don't need to keep packing it on. Yeah, mid 90s. I feel like I run, I could run a marathon. Yeah, but I definitely uh, wouldn't uh, advise uh, that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, and I've heard I've heard other guys say this too. Like as the weight goes up, like you almost see. You would think that you know at a certain point, like you 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 know, you're heavier, so you'd be stronger. But at a certain point, I feel like there's probably, a, you know, diminished returns where you, like you said, you feel sluggish and you probably see, like, no increased performance at all. Zero. Yeah. And, you know, the thing is, like, I got diagnosed with sleep apnea at um, 200, uh, 317 pounds, right? So 317 pounds, I have sleep apnea, I have to wear this mask every night. Yeah. The minute... I go into the 90s, I don't have to – I'm good. Yeah. I don't score. It's fucking – it's weird. Forget it. I'm in prep and I'm like 270, man, I, I don't even need the mask. I still wear it, but yeah. there's mm. – like if I fall asleep on the couch and I nap, I'm like, hey, babe, did I snore at all? She's like, I didn't even, I didn't even hear anything. Didn't even mm. know you are sleeping. Whereas over 300, I feel – I sound like I'm about to, you know – Yeah. Freaking! I sound like a bear. You know? Gary, have you noticed that as you as you lean down at all that you that you are snoring less? Or yeah. Is it yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's always the case with with, with it. Um, the idea is to not while, while you're in the off season not to die or do heart damage in the process, and also because you want to have good sleep because that's where growth comes from. But it's always going to go down. You're always not going to snore. My wife always said I didn't snore when I got you know much lower. You know, I'm I'm right now 25 pounds down from when I started prep back in March. Uh, so, you know, it's um, I feel definitely more athletic at this. I notice that I'm not like leaning over machines, like huffing and puffing between sets. I notice a little bit of a drop in strength, but nothing crazy. I mean, I still you know press the 130s, 140s, 150s, and stuff like that. But you know, nothing like. It's nothing crazy, but the endurance and the my ability to move around the gym has great. I can you know I tie my shoes again. I can put the weights back without the lower back pumps. Like of like, I used to fear that the most in the gym. The most is like, you know, you got all this weight on like a deadlift bar. And you're like, fuck, I got to put this weight back now, and that's gonna be the most pain staking thing that you're gonna do the whole time is because your lower back's gonna pump up. And you're not you're not gonna be able to walk. Yeah, I I noticed that went away. I just feel like it's not even worth it at that point. Like, like you said, the minute you start prep and you're a weight where you're like, oh, let me just get to it, you lose 30 pounds right away. And it's like you look kind of the same. It's like there's no point in even, at least for me, to gain that extra weight. You know, when I, I – and I know, like, as I get older, you know, muscles are going to come and I'll just get heavier. And that's kind of like what I'm letting happen. I'm not – dude, walking around with your belly over your dick – that's there's no point in that <laughs> you know, to, fill, to, to eat so much and it's i i just feel like i don't at that know. point you're almost just causing your body more stress and inflammation than anything like you said if there's really no return to it and you guys already have all the mass it's just at this point it's kind of just a matter of kind of like molding the clay like they say exactly um, like you guys have it already so there's no point in just packing it on just you know for no reason right it's funny it's funny what Vincendo said about, he said, you know, with his belly being sticking out and, and then he said food, you, what, what, your pound on his food. A lot of people like to blame, you know, growth, insulin and all yeah. that on, on the stomachs. And it's really not. It's, I know a lot of guys with flat stomachs, you know, men's physique, at least the men's physique guys aren't using insulin and growth. They are. It's not even abuse. It's the food pounding. Yeah. I can feel my stomach getting bigger as I'm putting down 10 ounces of steak and 16 ounces of potatoes and stuff like that. That's a huge volume meal. Where do you think it's going? Not yeah. to mention you got sea salt on there. You're drinking about a quarter gallon of water, maybe more during the meal. It's all rushing in. It's absorbing with the sodium and it's just blowing your stomach out. And you, you better have your digestion like 
in a good spot and which most guys don't and and to be able to get that shit out or just going to build up fester up and it's just going to gas your stomach up and that's where the turtle shell comes from it's not he's listen if Dave Palumbo's stomach is fucking flat right now which it is he just actually pulled his shirt up it, then the, the actual organs didn't grow. I don't, I don't believe that for a second. I think that it's just we have so much food in it and it's been carried on for like the days before probably. Right. You know, and, yeah, and then you're doing like you said, you're packing all this in and then you're doing it again in two hours. Like, yes. Yeah. The, amount of food, the amount of food that we're eating, everyone's like, oh, you got to eat every three hours. I'm like, what time do you think I wake up? What, at four in the morning? If I wake up at eight o'clock in the morning, what time do you think I go to bed? I want to go to bed at 10, 11 o'clock, not, not three in the morning, but to get these certain meals down, you got to space these out two hours, maybe two and a half at the most, if you're getting seven or eight meals down a day and they're big, they're not little. So it's like you're compounding and that, uh, it sounds terrible, which it, it, I think it's much harder than dieting. Dieting is just being hungry and being tired from cardio. And then you get a little wonky at the end. And I think for me, I work better with that because the meals become not even a thing. It's more like, oh, it's two o'clock. We got to eat. That takes about three seconds to go down. Bang, bang. Back to what I was doing during the day. Yeah. You know, yeah I'll tell you guys, like, I'm not anywhere near the size of either one of you. And I'll tell anyone that asks me, I've had more problems on the way up, you know, like as far as struggling with the food than on the way down. I can starve myself and get fucking peeled. No questions asked. Like, that's just what the plan is. But on the way up, when you're just slamming food and you don't want to eat, and every, you know, every marker of your biofeedback is telling you, no, like, we can't handle any more food, and you, then you have to force it. That was, that's always been a bigger struggle for me than on the way down. Yeah. I think I'm at the point right now where, like, I'm big enough, obviously, up top, and we all know, I, you know, I've been pounding the legs and things like that, but... Yeah. I really just eat when I'm hungry yeah. and I'm still 300 pounds. Yeah. So well, you've kind of set that as like your, your set point at this point. Like you've carried yeah. that muscle for so long that, you know, it, it takes like a pretty good effort probably to even come down below that at this point. Yeah. It's like, I've been through the trenches, man, with the eating, bro. Yeah. Like I got up to my heaviest ever was 327 and bro. Well, well, okay. So for the people listening, what the fuck were you eating when you're 327? All right, before you I remember say, roughly I what it was, suggest this. I do not suggest this to anyone. I was 22, 23 years old. I was very young. Um, and I just fucking didn't really think it. The few, I just did it. So I just couple couple qu all right, a couple questions to set this, set the scene here for this. A couple questions. One, were you working with a coach? I just met Dom. Okay. So I, I did one show with Dom. I won the overall at the uh, John Kemper Classic yep. in New Jersey. Yeah. All right. So go ahead. Animal sign me. All right. So, so go so, ahead. So you're working with Dom. You're 22. What's the diet look like? I'm working with Dom. He sends me some diet. I'm like, I ain't following the diet. I'm fucking <laughs> trying to get big. <laughs> so me being the knucklehead, I'm like, all right. So just eat as much as possible, right? Yeah. So Animal had the product called Animal Mass. It was a shake. It yeah. was like three and a half scoops. It mixed fucking perfectly. You could throw stuff in there, bananas, peanut butter, all that stuff. Yeah. So every morning, I would start out with an Animal Mass shake, which I think was almost 900 calories. Yeah. Um, 60, 70 grams of carbs, 60 grams of protein. And I would have three bagels with butter and peanut butter. So regular butter and peanut butter. And I would drive to work. Nice and easy. Drink the shake and have the bagels as I, as I go. Um, meal two was uh, like 12 ounces of ground meat, a white meat. And I think I matched the potato with it. So like 12 ounces of 12, sweet potato. 12, yeah. yeah. Then lunchtime came around. So I would have a break in between clients. I would train people from 9 to 12. And from 12 to 3, I would be off. Yeah. And then I'll go back. So I would hit up a fast food joint, whatever I wanted, Taco Bell, Wendy's, McDonald's, whatever I was in the mood for, I would spend over $20 just myself, easy. Every day? Every day. Twice a day. Hold on. Twice a day. Okay. So All right. I would get, my, my go-to was Wendy's. It still is. Okay. So I would get a triple, yeah. triple with cheese, um, chicken, uh, fried chicken sandwich, spicy, 
large fry, six piece nugget, and of course the diet coke. Diet, diet. Like that. Yeah. I would go back to work, uh, train some clients. I would have another twelve ounces of white meat with rice this time. So like two cups of rice, whatever. Um, then I would train. Then after I train, I'd have animal mass shake again uh, by itself. Then usually it was like seven, eight o'clock. I would be driving home. And before I got home, I stopped at whatever place I wanted, whether it's Taco Bell, Wendy's, whatever I wanted. Hit that up and fucking just sit on my recliner and play Xbox. Huh. Any cardio? What'd you say? Any cardio? No cardio. No. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> got insulted him. Nothing. And, bro, I got up to fucking 327 and couldn't move. Fat? Were you fat? Well, I was bloated to shit. Yeah. But I was fucking strong, deadlifting six wheels, maybe yeah. a little more. Yeah. Uh, pressing, like, warming up at 150s. Jesus. Just uh, inclining uh, 405, nothing. Did you feel terrible, though? Yeah. Like, just walking around, did you feel awful? Yeah, I couldn't, I, I couldn't even get out of bed. Yeah. Vincenzo, did you get the anxiety back then that, like, were you ever, like, to the point where you felt so bad that you were afraid to go to sleep because you didn't think you were going to wake up? Never. I couldn't he was so to... young. He was so young. Yeah. You were, you were, you were naive in people. that. Like, I, I've seen so many bodybuilders die. Like, you probably at that point of your life didn't. I thought you were so new to it. Like, for me, like, I know, like, the repercussions, and I, like, know, like, like the signs that you're having a heart attack and stuff. So like, and then if you become, become like a neurotic person and you know that you're over 300, you're pushing gear and it's like, you know that you're on the line. So you start like looking for this shit. There was times like I would get this anxiety before bed, like where I wouldn't want to lay down because I'm like, I, I don't, I think I'm going to die in my sleep tonight. And then I'd wake up in the morning. I was always okay in the morning. And then at night it would get fucked up. I'm like, thankfully I never turned to like any kind of pills or anything like anti anxiety pills or anything. Plus you, you, you got to this, you got to this 300 marker like later in life one. And then two, you have, you know, you have a wife, you have a kid. This, this guy is talking about being 22 and just fucking slamming it back. He didn't have a care. In no, the I had nothing, no attachments. Yeah. I had a girlfriend. That's it. I fucking didn't, didn't pay rent. Didn't have a, I had no, nothing. Yeah. I just fucking said, okay, they want me at 300 pounds. Let's go. Now, let me ask you, looking back, do you regret doing it or are you glad that you did it? No, absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. I don't regret anything I did, no. Yeah. Because I feel like I had to do that yeah. or else mm. I would have been fucking a string bean. So that I did have... that and then, you know, I started dieting, stuff like that. And then the next time around, when I got to like three bills, three plus, I did, I, I different. had a little more knowledge about how to do it. Yeah. But I was already, you know, starting to, you know, maintain that weight. Like even when I come off cold turkey, everything, I'm dieting like a normal human. I'm 275, bro. Yeah. Rip, like, good. Well, that's like yeah. that set point that we're talking about. Like you yeah. have a certain amount of muscle that you've established and held for a long time that even when all the other shit isn't in play, it's like, okay, just hanging out. This is how much muscle you're walking around with. Right. And I feel like that kind of got me to that point. Um, and like health wise, like, like even now with blood work, everything's very normal. Yeah. Kidney function, liver function, cholesterol, uh, lipids, everything. Yeah. So people can say, oh, you know, you're fucking everything up. These assholes don't know that they you're getting know. blood work three, t uh, every three months. Yeah. You know what I mean? They just think you're, you know, playing Russian roulette, but. Also, I, I think people that see you on the internet and have not seen you in person or had to stand next to you. You have a massive frame. Like your body is meant to hold this much weight. Like right. whereas, like comparing the two of you guys, Gary's only five nine. At the right. height of his off season, he's walking around like he'd come into my office, and there were some days like if the shirt was a little snug or something, I'd be like, dude, you are maxed the fuck out. Like you cannot get any more muscle on this frame of yours. Yeah. Whereas like and like it it did look unhealthy and like he probably takes it as a compliment. But at a certain point I was like, dude, you look like you're gonna fucking die. Like you are just carrying way too much weight on this frame. But, but for I, you, you're what, six dudes? No, I'm sorry. How are you, man? 
No, I feel like a lot of dudes are like that because you don't really see too many taller dudes. Right. Yeah. That fill out a frame and look right. decent. You know, yeah. like I feel like you know, you know, th- I'm I'm meant for this, and yeah. you know, I feel like I can hold a 315, 320 in the future. I mean, like I said, I feel like I'm just starting at 27 years old. Think of this. Yeah. After all the years of training, I'm finally looking at myself in the mirror and being like, "Whoa." You know what I mean? Like I feel like a fucking. And no, also, I, even even if if you know, like you're talking about getting to eventually being three fifteen or whatever, it the weight may not even you know it may not even get to three fifteen or three twenty. But as you mature and progress, the look is going to be different. What you look like at three hundred, you know, a year ago is going to be different than what three hundred looks like two years from now. Right. I don't number chase anymore, bro. I haven't even yeah. really weighed myself. I don't. I don't weigh myself every day, once a week, all that shit. I don't, yeah. I look in the mirror and say, damn, let's go. Or, or I just did the 150s for 20 reps and that was cake, you yeah. know, or, or I, you know, whatever I did. So I kind of track my progress because, you know, this is, this is my, you know, I, I could track it myself. I don't need to scale right. and say, oh, I'm down two pounds, this and that. I, like you said, I could be three, like right now, I'm like three bills almost. People are like, damn, bro, like you're the biggest I've ever seen. And I'm like, yeah but i used to be 330 almost. right you know but yeah you know then you just kind of take it with a grain of salt but you you know people see that they see the muscle maturing they see the size they see the yeah. calves the legs getting bigger and stuff and yeah you know you just kind of carry more it. muscle you're gonna have like you know we had john jewett on a couple of weeks ago and he was talking about like how you know he's noticed as he's as you know as he's matured the shape stays around a little bit longer like you know how like when you die down and the shoulders and the traps, everything looks super round. And then yeah. as you put that body fat back on, you start to lose some of the shape. He yeah. was saying that he holds the shape longer now, like with, at, yeah. at a higher weight. At a higher like when weight. You're, when you're saying like people are saying now, oh, you're, you know, you're bigger than I've ever seen you. A part of that is because it's mature muscle that keeps that shape even as the weight goes on. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, um, I, wanted to, I wanted to ask you, though, like the big bulk that you did, there's going to be kids that are listening to this that, you know, they just want to be huge like you and Gary. Right. And, you know, they might be a skinny kid naturally or whatever. Um, do you feel like that's something that, it, you know, at least once everybody has to go to and Gary, you can answer to this too, but do you feel like that that's something that at least one time, if you, if your goal is to be huge, that you have to go through just a ridiculous, like almost dirty bulk like that, just to see, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, uh, who's going first? I mean, you want me to go first? Yeah, go ahead. It, yeah. It, it's it's hard to say, um, and because I've done both kinds of off seasons, and I've done both of them, yeah, worse or better than others. Meaning, the last three years before, prior to this off season, I was ultra lean. Right. So, to go in, from 2015 to 2016, I only went to 236 after competing at 213. So I gained okay. 20 pounds, and I was. The next prep was so easy that I didn't do cardio the whole time because I shredded the whole time. But probably too lean though, right? Like where you held too back. Lean. Yeah. Yep. Too lean. And um and I then I started like creeping up a little bit. And then I got to like it, for 2017, I started at like 254 and I competed at I, I was probably my best conditioning at 213 that year, but I looked skinny. Right. So this year I knew I had two years and I this was a different kind of offseason. I've done dirty bulk off seasons going in 2014 where it was like take insulin, eat beef and pasta, like, and then go to like the gym. It was just all wrong. It was all throw aside. It was all forcing like 80% meat down my throat and just really shitty fat. My digestion, yeah. my gut was just hanging over. And I was scale chasing there. I was like, yeah. I remember being 285 feeling like death and saying I have to get to 300. And it just wasn't happening. You know what I mean? To the point where my blood pressure was high, you know, and then this time, my body was ready to rebound the proper way out of the 2018 show. I actually started training for real, where I, I knew it a long time, so I was doing progressive overload. I paid a lot of attention to my recovery, where I wasn't going to the gym as much. I wasn't doing the gym as long. Sleep. Yeah. You kind of you maximized every element of it. It kind of all came right. together for you. And, and I followed a diet this time. It was just, it was a different kind of diet. It was a high fat diet, um, much more fat than I was used to. And so I, my body fat did go up, but it wasn't like, people think you assume you're eating burgers all the time like that. I had like one cheat, one to two cheat meals a week. Yeah. And I followed that protocol. Yeah. Um, so I 
it, it's really an individual thing because I do have clients and most of my clients come for me from off of Instagram and they they hit me with the, I want to be huge, bro. And if they're skinny, I think that they're obviously going to have to do that. But some of these guys are like way overweight already. Right. Like their belly's hanging over their pants and, you know, love handles. And then they're like, dude, just mask me up. And I'm yeah. like, well, we got to recomp first, like a lot. And then they're like, yeah. well, so are we going, are we going down first? And I'm like, yeah, I can't just, I said, and then I give them the whole speech. This is 16 years in the making. And you know, this yeah. is, you can't just do it that fast. It's a whole nother conversation. But um, I don't think that guys like that really should. Yeah. Um, especially if they're like a husky type of guy, right. um, they're really just going to get fat yeah. and they're probably not going to put as much mass on. But if you're a mesomorph, um, like, like I would, tall, I would, if you're a tall skinny type, let's say. Right. That's like Vin, the move. Vin, Vin, I think is a mesomorph, but he's just really tall. Right. I, I wouldn't consider him an ectomorph, like a skin and bones, like, you know, like Dirk Nowitzki type guy. I just think right. that he, he's just a taller framed, but mesomorph with the easily ability to build a lot of muscle. Yeah. Um, I think guys like that could take an off season liberally and push the red meat, push the, uh, the fats and, they, and push everything about that point. And then really, you know, blast it up. And then the other, that sets new set points. The off seasons that come after that, you can refine, stay leaner. And then before you know it, the looks, you know, your 300 pound look will be different. Your 270 pound look will be different from the last time. So yeah. that's my stance on that. So Vin, like, let's, I'll kick this over to you then. Like, let's say, um, like Gary kind of, kind of answered this, like as far as body types or whatever, but you know, for, there's going to be some skinny kid that's listening to this. And let's say it's like a tall skinny kid that, that, you know, like me. says that he struggles to put weight on. I would right. say that's probably the, the route that you went might be the right move for that type of person. Then. Exactly. So yeah. me growing up, man, I used to get made fun of all day, like up until like at least ninth, tenth grade, man. Like tenth grade, I started gain, gaining respect. What for being skinny? Yeah, and just yeah. it's skinny but fairly good looking. So girls still wanted you. <laughs> this guy. Right? So, listen, listen. so people, would, you know, say, "Why do you want to be with that skinny fuck pussy?" This that. Like seriously, right. bro. I was bullied all through middle school, bad. Right. Um, and I and that kind of gave me like a a drive to like start bodybuilding and stuff. It, but yeah, bro, if I pulled up a picture of what I looked like, I was 5'10", 140, at, going into ninth grade. Yikes. 5'10", oh 140. Yeah. So then ninth grade, it was 160. And then finally, 10th grade, 185. And then 11th grade, 220. And then senior year, 235. And then you know, senior so year, fuck all kid, of you. But <laughs> I would suggest like a kid like that, like how I was, yeah. dude, I could eat anything and everything i wanted and there wasn't enough time in the day to eat yeah to even gain you know yeah. so i knew even at 22 being that young saying like i mean i'm not gonna get fat like a fat person like yeah. overhanging belly and like love handles but let's just go let's let's yeah. do it and like why Plus, not? like just as a disclaimer for someone that's listening like you got to be training and really getting after it as well like you can't just pound shitty food and train like a pussy and expect that you're going to get big. No, it's never going to happen. Yeah. I was still training six days a week, pushing. I would look, yeah. I would get into any gym at that when I was that big. And even now, I go, what's the heaviest dumbbell? Oh, 170? I got to do something with that. Yeah. That was my mentality and still is. Like, I was eating all that shit, but in reality, probably burning a lot too. Putting it to work though. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and – I don't know. It's not like I did that for five years and I'm looking back saying, oh, man, those right. are the I did that for like one year. Yeah, that's no, that's me. not that's not a long term philosophy that I think anybody wants to keep. But I was more I was more asking, like, you know, for that skinny kid that does struggle to put or keep weight on, you know, is it is it worth going down that avenue as like a one time thing just to see how much weight you could pack on? Because Absolutely. even like you guys, you guys both touched on it. Like, you know, even if it's not super pretty, if you can reset like where your set point is with your weight you can ha hold it and kind of change what that weight looks like then and recomp at that weight once you put it on exactly. um but we're uh, we're coming up here they they put a limit on on how long we get to do these recordings um so quick recap so the plan for you you're gonna hit nationals in november and the pro card's coming i'm not even gonna talk about anything after that 
I have to step on the stage and they have to just say who's second. Yeah. This is mm. it, man. I'm, I mean. Vincenzo, I'm doing North Americans, but if I don't get my card there, I'm eyeing the North American, uh, the Nationals as well. Do you imagine if both of us got our pro card in the same class? I was just gonna say that I was just gonna ask Vin if he if he backed out of North Americans to avoid having to face the Chiefs. <laughs> Dude, to be honest, I didn't even know who was doing it or who. Yeah. Was doing it. Uh, I, I, I just been, found it. I, people can say, "Oh, this kid's doing it." I'm like, "Hey, I I might not even know who he is." And B, I don't really give a fuck. Yeah. You can't you can't you can't go by who you hear doing it honestly because me and Joe always talk about how. There's probably guys – you should be worried about the guy that nobody knows about. He's probably going to – no Instagram. Him. Yeah. He's going to kill everybody. So you and not only them. that, there could be guys that are phenomenal that you see on Instagram, you know, every week leading up to the show. And then the day of the show, you know, his girlfriend breaks up to him and is, you know, <laughs> he lost his yeah. job and he comes out stressed and looks watery. Like, you, you never yeah. know. So exactly. – um, Judge me on the day. That's all that matters. Yeah. So, all right. So, so nationals and then – you know, if need be, you're looking at USA's for December? Okay. If need be. All right. So then, all right. So, uh, spot, man. so uh, what else? Do you do, um, you know, for anybody listening, do you do online coaching? Do you take clients right now? Uh, yeah. I mean, right now, no. But yeah. I'll, I'll give them my email and see what they're all about. Yeah. Um, no, my time right now is very, very limited. Yeah. I'll be, email me at mass, M-A-S-S, Army, A-R-M-Y. The okay. number one at gmail.com. Um, what's, uh, what's your IG? IG is Vincenzo Massoni, one word. Um, and yeah, you guys can reach me on those platforms. You know, send me a message, comment. I always try to comment back. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you guys are going to follow this journey because I just hired a cameraman, so he's going to be following me around. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, uh, you know, best of, luck, best of luck to you throughout the season and uh, throughout the prep. You know, of course, we're going to be following along. Gary, you got anything else for Big Ben? No, I think that's it. No? All right. Well, thanks for coming on. Thanks, Big Ben. Come train. Yeah. Um, Thanks for taking the time, Big Ben. We appreciate it. Best of luck with everything, and we'll talk soon. All right, guys. Thank you for your time. Take care.